One of the biggest upsets at this year's World Cup was Japan defeating both Germany and Spain to advance into the knockout round as the top team from Group E. To give you an idea of just how hard this group was, using ELO ratings for each national team, which are commonly used in the chess world to measure skill level, there have only ever been 13 groups harder in terms of quality at the World Cup than this Group E. And it wasn't just blind luck that allowed Japan to win these games. These wins were only possible because of Japan's killer tactics and incredible game plan. A game plan so good that it could change tournament football forever. To first fully understand Japan's game plan, you must understand a little bit of general football tactics. When watching a football game between two opponents, where one opponent is clearly much better than the other, a very common game plan for the weaker team is to focus on defending first and goal second. The weaker team will focus on preventing as few goals as possible, usually by putting most of their players back on defense, while looking for areas that their opponents could make mistakes where they can attack through. It is a very low risk style of football, and ideally teams look to score at least once and then defend their lead. This makes it very hard for their much more skilled opponents to move the ball into dangerous areas near their goal to create more shots and opportunities. This is also known as parking the bus. This game plan does work, hence why it's very commonly seen when opponent skill levels are vastly different. We tend to see this when teams like Manchester City play against weaker teams in the Premier League. Japan took this idea and they took it a step further, in a way that we've never seen before. If we look at Japan's first game of the tournament against Germany, the first half plays out very much how you would expect it to. Germany dominate the possession, the shots, and even go up 1-0 by the time halftime comes around. Germany had accumulated 14 shots, with Japan only having one shot that came a minute before halftime. Japan were very much sitting back and defending for the entire first half, waiting to pounce on a Germany mistake that didn't happen. It was the halftime changes where we saw Japan's new game plan come into action. Japan subbed on a center back for one of their midfielders, which allowed them to change their system from a four defenders, four midfielder system to a three defender, four midfielder system, and add three attackers up front instead of two. Japan then surprised Germany by changing up how they were gonna play. Instead of coming out like the first half and sitting back and playing defensive, Japan came out and pressured Germany and went on the offensive. With more players in the attack and a similar four-man midfield, Japan were able to push numbers forward and attack Germany when they had possession, making it very hard for Germany to keep possession like they were able to in the first half. The idea is now to force Germany to make mistakes closer to their goal so Japan can recover possession and score with more players forward. And the crazy thing is, it was working. Germany were not able to gain complete control over the match again, and Japan were forcing a lot more mistakes. Japan were then bringing on two fast attackers, fresh off the bench, to attack the tired Germany defense a little bit later on in the second half. With this increased pressure from their key subs, the change in system catching Germany off guard, and with some luck, Japan were able to get two goals back over Germany and take the lead. This is where Japan resorted back to their first half plan of sitting back and defending their lead. Japan then defended for the rest of the game, where they held out the 2-1 win. There were a lot of questions on Germany's part, like what happened if they had scored more goals from their shots, why did they take their key players off so early, and also, why didn't they adapt to Japan's system? However, we do have to give credit to Japan coming up with a plan that was able to surprise Germany in the second half. However, this was just one game, and the crazy thing would be if they were able to use the same game plan to take out another top tier team in the tournament. A few days later, Japan versus Spain started out very much how you would expect it. Spain were passing Japan to death in the first half, while Japan looked very much solid defending compactly and waiting for Spain to make a mistake. Spain had over 500 passes in the first half, and it wasn't until the second half once again where Japan implemented their plan. This time, however, Japan saw a chance to go at Spain immediately. Spain are very much a team that's whole game plan is focused around keeping possession of the ball and passing between one another before finally finding a chance on goal. Nobody ever would have thought of pressing into the Spain team, because typically when you apply pressure to a team that's very good at keeping possession, it can often lead to holes in your defense and making the press very ineffective because the team can then pass around the pressure very well. However, by bringing the pressure early on in the second half, Spain had very little time to adapt and react from the shock of Japan pushing numbers forward immediately as the halftime whistle blew. This quickly forced a shock Spain to make several vital mistakes which led to quick back-to-back -back goals. The world was once again shocked. Similarly to the first game, Japan then resorted to playing defense for the rest of the game and defending their 2-1 lead heroically. So why haven't we seen anything like this before and why is it such a game changer? There are two reasons we haven't seen a plan like this before and why it is successful. 
discipline and hard work, and tournament football. It is incredibly hard to build a well-drilled team able to defend for an entire half and then switch systems successfully through substitutions and then successfully maintain that lead. Japan defended for their lives against Germany, and the entire team was dedicated to helping out on defense. Tournament football is another reason why it worked, and why we haven't seen it before. Because the World Cup is a tournament-style system with very few games, teams need to get results in a few games or else they will be eliminated. A competition like this is similar to the Champions League in format. If teams are able to find a better way to attack against better opponents, it will lead to a lot more upsets and surprise victories unless the top teams can learn to adapt to these game plans. Assuming Spain had a competent coaching staff, it's safe to assume that they did their homework on Japan and thought they could still beat them with these second half changes. But Japan still looked to catch them by surprise and come away with another big win. I fully expect to see teams in the future copying this game plan of Japan by sending a lot of pressure in the second half, trying to find an early lead in the second half, and then holding on to that lead, as it leaves less time for the opponents to come in, adapt, and regain their own leads.